this is our propane tank. It's a 500 gallon propane tank that sits on top of this slope. Uh, it's been leveled twice now since we've lived here. There are two metal safety straps on it right now, but when we first moved in, the propane tank was secured from the eyelets on the ends from there to that tree and then from that eyelet to that tree it had some nylon straps that were like they were about to break or fall apart they were completely covered in mildew and moss Not sure if it can be seen but there's a bunch of rust underneath it on this end and down on that end we've asked them to come treat the rust or switch the tank out and asked them in last year in july and then they came out in december in during the winter and said they could not treat it because it was winter okay but i contact you in july and you show up in december anyway my concern at this point is I don't know how much you can tell, but if you look at the bricks that are stacked underneath it, they're all all over the place. That one's leaning, the front right is leaning to the left, the back one is slightly leaning to the rear, the left front is canted to the inside, and then the far back left one is canted in the bricks aren't touching on the, aren't even touching the ground on the front of the bricks. Rather than repair the tank, they said they're gonna come out and switch it out. So now I have 18 days to put a concrete pad down to put the propane tank on. So that's what I'm gonna start working on. And another issue is the stakes that you may or may not be able to see that are down here is the property line and so the propane tank is canted so that it's actually over the property line and i just don't want to run into issues down the road where the property owner over here decides they want to say that my propane tank is sitting on their property so to avoid the issue since i can't move the tank the concrete pad is going to have to be built in front of where these bricks currently are. I'm going to have to dig it out some, put a gravel base down, and put some concrete in. And then uh, make sure it's level, and they'll come out and pull this tank out and put a new tank in. This propane line right here runs straight down the hill goes underneath the shed to the side of the house. The propane line is 12 inches below ground. So without the tank being moved and the propane line being disconnected, I'm gonna carefully dig and then uh, make it so I can lay the concrete slab without the propane line being underneath the concrete. Got my line dug up it goes about 10 feet out and it's even though it's a rigid copper line i'll be able to disconnect it up there and move it out of the way enough to be able to put the concrete slab down what i've been doing is starting to level the ground out here so i can lay my base of gravel for the concrete to be poured onto. I am putting this slab directly in front of this tank here because this is gonna be a one stop. They're basically gonna stop, move the old one out of the way, put the new one in on one trip. So I can't get them to move it so that I can put the concrete slab back there. Uh, where the propane tank currently is and because the propane tank is over the property line 
it's going to have to be set back anyway. So I'm just going to move it out here. Uh, one of the issues I'm running into right now is roots because I have a massive pine tree right here. And then there's a bunch of other pine trees. The majority are pine trees. But back to my main point, there are some roots down here. And one of the things I'm concerned about is if, you know, I, I know typically you can cut some small roots and not have to worry about a tree dying. And I hope in this case, because there's some two inch in diameter roots in the spot that I need to put the slab. And I'm not going to put concrete over the roots because the roots will continue to grow and lift and uh, if it's within the concrete it'll break the concrete so I need to get all the roots out it's getting there slow and steady this was the low side and that's the high side so I'm having to go down quite a bit over here in order to get this side level with this side still got to do a little bit top grading right here and then probably bring that down some more and I'm trying not to dig out any more dirt than I need to because I want to not use too much concrete well, you can never use too much concrete but I don't want to have to purchase more concrete than I need to definitely what I don't want to do is remove dirt and then have to put dirt back because right now as I'm digging this dirt is very compact i don't want to put a bunch of loose dirt down and then have to pack it again uh, i do have a tamper and i'll use the tamper when i put the gravel down so i've made a lot of progress on digging out where i'm gonna put my slab for the propane tank and i didn't mention it earlier but so the recommendation for a 500 gallon tank is a pad that is 100 inches long by 60 inches wide i can understand having more surface area but based on where the legs are on the propane tank i don't see any point in making the concrete pad that huge so what i'm going to do is make the pad 36 inches wide and 80 inches long which will give more than enough surface area for the legs on the tank to sit on the legs the legs are only uh, 18 inches apart and uh, five feet five feet going across this way and 18 inches from the inside to the outside and that that was what i saw but i also saw many different dimensions for how big the slab should be i think 36 by 80 is going to be more than enough it's going to be slab will be six inches thick with reinforced um, or rebar within it i got as far as my calibrated eye could get me now i've got the levels out here and eh based on i mean it, it's still kind of rough but i need to take a couple more inches out over on this side and towards the back very back corner and then i'll be somewhat level and then i'll have to just do some final touch up pretty close to level there left to right and front to rear showed it before but this is pretty uh pretty steep slope i think it's around 19 degree slope I mean, either way it's going to be sitting on some flat ground but i need to get it below grade because i still have to put gravel in there as well some more work to do still not completely ready to put concrete in or gravel and then rather than digging out the center and then having to build it back up i just put a trench around the outside to get the concrete Oh, once I get my boards up, the concrete will be below grade on the edges. And then what I'm going to use is some old deck boards from an old cabin that was on the property to build the box. 
then I'm going to put the concrete in. The outside boards will be 39 inches. The inside lengthwise boards will be uh, 80 inches, which will give me a concrete slab that's uh, 80 by 36. I'm just going to lay the box in there. And then what I'll do is use, I'll drive some stakes in the ground and then use a level to level out the form that I'm going to put in there and then just nail the the form to the stakes and then make sure all along the top edge that it's level front to rear and left to right so there were quite a bit of roots in there uh, luckily some of the roots are from some of the dead trees over there and I think that if I dig any more I'm gonna end up digging more roots up but so that's what kind of prompted me to not dig out the center as much because there are a bunch of roots over in that corner and some right over there it's now day two on this project i picked up 17 80 pound bags of concrete i don't think i'll need that much but if i leave this form like this then i definitely will so I dug out the ground because it was sloped and then leveled it out. But now that the form is in place, it's way too high. And I think I was just caught up in trying to keep this slope back here and then have the concrete just above the slope so that water doesn't run across the top of the concrete slab when it's done. But I will have to put a ton of fill in here and then also put some form boards underneath the boards that are already here up underneath here and then once this tank is moved out I'll come back and slope the ground over here so that it's below the top of the concrete it's now day three of working on this propane tank slab I did put up this sunshade canopy yesterday and got the form all leveled out and I'm just getting started for the day and it's raining again it's rained all three days but uh, put a little bit of gravel in yesterday I'm going to put some more gravel in today. Besides gravel, I'm going to put rocks in it as part of my fill. And then another thing is I'm going to have to clean up this little trench around the outside. But I'm going to clean that up some because I want the concrete uh, along all the edges to go all the way down. Once I get all that done, uh, I will start putting the concrete in. I've got one 80 pound bag done working on my second 80 pound bag doing one bag at a time and this is uh just for reference it's quick creep high strength concrete mix 80 pound bag i think it was like four dollars and 82 cents a bag by the way please like comment and or subscribe this is 16 bags 16 80 pound bags of concrete poured we got one bag left and the concrete calculator that i used wasn't well i won't say that it's it was inaccurate um i did have the little trenches that went around the outside that i didn't account for so i'm gonna need a couple more bags and i'm gonna guess at this point six bags and one of the things i notice as i progress through this is that the concrete on the top was getting wetter and wetter as i went so on my last two bags of concrete i didn't put that much water that way the concrete that i put on top would absorb some of the water that's sitting on top and now I'm just going to go through and 
embed it into the other concrete that's already been poured. There's the slab after 21 and a half bags of concrete. Only had 17 initially. I had to go get some more to finish it. I did end up with quite a bit of water on the top of it and had to keep putting concrete in, dry concrete, drier concrete, in order to get the, the water to shed off the top of the concrete. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and then I'll come out and smooth it out again. And after that, I'll probably just do the brushed effect on the top of it and then uh, I'll just use my edging tool to clean up the edges. Today is day four of the propane tank slab project. I let this uh, dry over night last night. We've had rain just about every day and then last night we had rain and some winds as evidenced by all the leaves that have fallen. When it had set for a while, about three or four hours, I came out and did the edges and well, I used a broom to put a texture on the top. And then I also did the edges on it. And here comes more rain. So the project's almost complete. Just need to pull the form off and then see what the sides of the slab look like and probably touch those up. All right, so all the stakes are out. Looks like it came out pretty good. Sides are generally smooth. Had a small hole right in there with it. That is, so I covered it with tape. The tape stuck to the concrete, even though it was initially stuck to the wood. Sometime last night, this frog decided to puddle up underneath the wood. So now he's just my safety inspector. The form is completely off. Sides don't look too bad. Um, now I need to put this propane tank line back into the ground. So I'm going to dig a trench back to the middle of the concrete slab so that it goes straight up the center so that when they move that tank and put the new tank here, the line will be where it needs, needs to be. They may come here and move it out of the way themselves, but I'm going to put it back basically somewhat, I'm going to put it somewhat back the way that it was instead of being over there. It'll just be over here. Either way, they're going to have to shorten this propane tank line because now it's way too long. And then I'm going to also slide that protective sleeve down so that it goes underground and then up above the ground. I was told before I started this project that the propane tank line would be 12 inches below ground when I dug it up 
it was probably six inches below ground and uh, six and in some places eight but it definitely wasn't 12 inches i'm gonna redo this just this upper portion and make sure that it's 12 inches below ground uh, i've got everything done that i can do for now i do want to keep a lip along this front edge just for service of the propane tank wasn't there before but i do want to bring it up some more i'm gonna have to bring some more dirt in here in order to do that um, i just wet the concrete down and looked it over again doesn't look too bad uh, i did a little bit with the landscaping but like i said since i don't have that much dirt i can't do too much i will have to get some and put it up here once this old tank is out of here then i can start working on sloping it slope because it actually up the hill that way it's all downhill towards the propane tank so a lot of rain comes running down this way and what i don't want to have happen is water and dirt go running across the top of the concrete so i need to make sure this dirt right here goes below the top of the uh, concrete slab i have the line buried back in the ground i got the protective sleeve right here it goes about six inches above the top of the concrete and it's really just to prevent dam damage to the line itself um, you know, weeding or mowing the lawn or whatever so you don't take it out and that's pretty much all i can do for for now gotta love it when a plan comes together the tank was supposed to be changed out on 20 october nobody showed up i contacted the company anyone that i needed to talk to wasn't available and then an email popped up at 504 p.m the day they were supposed to be here it was from the assistant branch manager and basically the email said i'm reaching out to you to inform you what's going on don't know why nobody could have reached out sooner or why no one bothered to call me to let me know that they weren't coming on 20 october and then uh, reading through the email because words have meaning i discovered that internally they decided that they're not going to replace the tank because apparently they sent somebody out here on my property to look at the tank whoever it was determined that the tank doesn't need to be replaced now i got an, another problem concrete pads done tanks ready to be moved but you know they decided internally that they're not going to replace it they're just going to move it to concrete pad i have to look to see if i have the sign that was in the ground but i had a sign here that said please don't fill the propane tank uh, being moved and it was in front of the tank but i think i i moved it when i was doing putting in the concrete pad and so the guy that normally fills the tank pretty much knew not to fill the tank unknown to me that uh, propane tank driver moved on to another company so another guy took his place took his route and he was unaware of the tank being moved even though there was a sign and actually the sign was like right there and i moved it and it was sitting against the fence right over here unfortunately he filled the tank so regardless of whether the tank's being replaced or moved it now cannot be removed because the tank is full of propane so now i gotta wait until the tank is at 10 percent 
before they will move the tank. I mean, if the if they've determined that the, the tank doesn't need to be replaced, that's fine. Uh, I'm I'm not so much concerned about having a new tank or an old tank, but if the rust and corrosion on this tank is going to cause it to become an issue, then yeah, it needs to be replaced. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Uh, apparently they think I can go through 300 gallons in three weeks because they put it on the calendar to come back here on 10 November. I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. If I'm using 300 gallons of propane in that short of a period of time, then I'm paying way too much or I'm using too much propane. 